Let me just start this video by saying this. If you are one of those women or one of those people, okay, but especially women who do not like to hear about breastfeeding, who do not like seeing people encourage others to breastfeed, please, this video is not for you. I take God beg you. I'm here to talk about breastfeeding, okay, because a lot of women want to learn about breastfeeding. A lot of women want to breastfeed their kids. So I am going to talk about it in today's video. I asked you all to send me questions about pregnancy and, you know, childbearing and child raising, the newborn phase and all of that. And I got so many questions, guys. Why didn't you guys tell me since that you have been wanting answers to these questions? Anyway, I got so many questions that I had to even divide them into different categories, okay? So today we're going to be tackling the topic of breastfeeding and then in subsequent videos, we're going to tackle things like postpartum depression, preparing for vaginal delivery, preparing for CS, um, you know, what to get for your kids and stuff like that, okay? We're going to delve into all of that in subsequent videos, but let us use this video first to talk about breastfeeding, which is one of my favorite topics ever, ever. Can you guys tell? We am excited, can you tell? Anyway, let me just... Um, I have your questions here. So let me just ask, let me answer your questions then I'll just add more information if I need to, okay? So the first question is, how long did it take for you to start breastfeeding after delivery? So it took me, for my kids it was different. For Cora, I think it took me like four or five days. She was my first child anyway. It took me like four or five days before I could actually, you know, breastfeed her properly. Um, for Ava, it took me, I think, two days. For Sophia, it took me two days as well. Like one and a half days for Sophia, for Ava, I think two days, okay? So it's the time frame reduced with each child. But for Cora, it was a hassle. Like Cora's own, it took me a long time and I was really, really stressed during that period. Again, I was a new mom. I didn't know so many things. So I think with the subsequent kids, knowing what I knew or after learning from my experience, I was able to do some things that helped me, you know, get into the breastfeeding mode quickly okay did you pump if yes how many times per day did you pump okay so with my first child Cora I pumped initially okay let me just break it down with Cora because I my breast milk did not come in quickly I was pumping in the hospital and I was giving her formula. So pumping in the hospital was just to stimulate the breast milk, but I was giving her mostly formula for the first like two days or three days, she was taking mostly formula. Then by day three, I think she was taking colostrum. I'm not sure if it came out by that time, but by day three, I noticed that she was sucking much longer and she wasn't as frustrated, even though milk wasn't coming out. Like I'll press and press and press, no milk was coming out. I didn't feel engorged, nothing, okay? But I feel like she was getting colostrum. Colostrum is that um, yellowish, liquid that looks like oil basically that comes first before your breast milk comes in okay so she was taking formula so when i got back home because i went back home like five days after when i got back home um my breast milk came in that night so the next day she started taking breast milk but because she was already getting used to bottle i now continued pumping so i was pumping i was feeding her directly big mistake okay i'll get into that but that was a big mistake so eventually when she turned two months she started rejecting the breast and wanted just the bottle so i continued pumping exclusively for three more months no almost four months because it was two months plus so almost four months i continued pumping exclusively till it was like i think it was like five months and some weeks and i was like i can't do this anymore okay i just packed up and that was how she stopped breast taking breast milk she now i now went to buy formula she now started taking formula okay so that was it for Cora, but for my other kids, um, I didn't really pump much because there was really no need. I was feeding them directly, so I didn't really pump much. But when I was feeding Cora, when I was pumping for Cora, I was pumping like six times a day. Basically, as many times as a child would need, I was pumping and pumping. And even at that, I wasn't even producing that much milk, okay? I see people now that pump and fill a whole freezer. At that time, I wasn't producing that much milk because I did not know some things again, which I now learned later on. So later on, when I now knew those things, I didn't really need them because my children were not, uh, I wasn't feeding them with bottle, okay? But with Ava and with Sophia I tried to pump after like when I got to like three four months I tried to pump and put in the freezer so that someone else could feed them okay so then I was pumping like twice a day maybe I'll pump in the morning pump in the evening like twice a day it wasn't really that much so but with Cora I was pumping six to eight times a day and I was pumping in the middle of the night though not just during the day middle of the night I didn't know that that stress let me just go into it anyway when you are stressed out your breast milk tends to cease or reduce in quantity 
No this and no peace. It's not about drinking ogi, drinking uh, palm wine, drinking this. When you are stressed out, when you've not had enough sleep, when you're not having enough sleep, when you're not eating well, when you are stressed out, what is the body going to use and produce the breast milk, okay? The body needs you to be in a relaxed, you know, peaceful position, or at least resemblance of peace. You need to have some sort of, you know, comfort for your body to produce breast milk. You need to be able to sleep well for your body to produce enough breast milk. It's not like it won't produce at all, though. It will produce, but it will not produce enough breast milk, okay? So, yeah, if you want to breastfeed your child, if you are really passionate about, you know, breastfeeding your child, or you're really interested, not passionate, if you're really interested in, you know, exclusive breastfeeding and all of that, know that your number one enemy is stress, okay? Your number one enemy is stress and lack of sleep okay the things that you should hold there is first of all your sleep do not trade your sleep for anything except i mean when you have to take care of the child if you can get sleep at any time please get that sleep if you can get help okay please get that help if you can get you know your husband to do some things your mother-in-law to do some things whoever is around to do some things for you while you rest and just nurse your baby then please do it okay you will see a huge improvement in your breast milk quantity so the next one is what are your breastfeeding essentials first of all your breasts okay <laughs> just have your breasts that's that's like 90 percent of the work is already done that's part of the reason why i love breastfeeding so much you just need your breast okay you don't need any contraption you don't need any all those things just once your breast is ready your child is going to get nourished okay but anyway to make things easier for you one of the things i love to have is a breastfeeding pillow you guys my first child cora i didn't have a breastfeeding pillow but whatever I did, and the difference was so clear. I feel like the reason why I struggled so much with feeding Cora was because of lack of experience, okay? I did not know some things. I wasn't experienced. There was nobody there to teach me. I hadn't seen or lived closely with someone who just gave birth. I don't have an elder sister, you know? So I was pretty much very new to this. And even my mom wasn't really a breastfeeding enthusiast either. She, she didn't really breastfeed exclusively. So to her, it's like, okay, what is going on here? Bottom line is that I did not have that much support for me, you know, breastfeeding in the beginning, especially with Cora. So that is why I struggled a lot with it, okay? And that is why I am making this video to try and encourage you guys out there, okay? Some people don't like breastfeeding. Some people, you know, feel like breastfeeding is a lot of stress because they don't have enough support. If you have enough support, both support I mean is support of people telling you you can do it, okay? Not just people just being there helping you to do other things. No, I mean people there telling you you can do it, okay? Relax, okay? Just try, just try again. Yes, it's painful, but push through that pain. I'm going to get into the pain here, okay? But yeah, just push through that pain. If you can get someone to encourage you, if you can get someone to really help you relax and just push through that initial pain, because it's very painful in the beginning, I'm not even going to lie. It's one of the most painful things you're going to deal with. And for first times, first time moms, when you deal with that pain, sometimes with on top of not sleeping well a child is crying all the time not being used to you know taking care of babies it is easy for you to give up okay but yeah if you can push through that pain trust me you are going to be happy for it eventually okay so you need that support but anyway so you need the pillow you also need linoleum cream basically um, nipple creams okay uh one of the best i had was the one from lansing or i've lo i love this so much you guys i think i just threw away that thing recently because i was using it for my lips and it was healing my lips like, like crazy cracked nipple dry nipple you know sore nipples it helps you to um, basically combat it. It's not like it will heal it overnight though, but it helps it not to crack too much. It helps it not to be so painful and for you not to get injured, you know, when your child is breastfeeding, okay? But if you don't have nipple cream, God already made a way, okay? Yes, your breast milk, after you finish breastfeeding your child, actually that um, hind milk, it's hind milk they call it, right? Four milk is the one that comes out first, which is mostly water and, you know, just a little bit of I mean, the composition is mostly, I think, like 75% water or something like that than other things, right? That first one is the four milk. Then the thicker one that is behind, that comes later on, is the hind milk. So that hind milk is the one that is very rich, right? It's, it's very rich in oil as well. So if you can just rub that hind milk on your nipples, the way this thing cures nipple, nipple pain, like, is see, God is wonderful. Again, let me even go into this, right? I'm just jumping all over the place, but... Take it as it is. Let me go into this, right? Some women cannot breastfeed, okay? They exist. Women that cannot breastfeed. They either have issues with their nipples or issues with their breasts or some medical conditions that makes it, you know, not just makes it difficult, that makes it, or make, makes 
it's impossible for them to breastfeed. So yes, there are some that it is impossible for them to breastfeed. There are some that it is incredibly difficult for them to breastfeed. And there are some that it is basically not advisable for them to breastfeed. Like if you have a health condition that you maybe can pass through your breast milk to your child, I don't know. Or if you have maybe sores there or a skin condition, I don't know. But there are some people that I know that they said for medical reasons, they are not advised to breastfeed, okay? Just know that all these categories I just mentioned, these three different categories, the impossible, the very extremely difficult, and the ones that for health reasons they cannot. You see those three categories there? They may, I mean genuine cases, so they make less than 1% of the population. So what are the odds that your breastfeeding challenges are just because you can't? What are the odds, okay? So I'm saying this to actually encourage you that as a woman, if you don't have all these issues, please try, if you can, try. It does a lot for you as a person. It does a lot for your child, nutrition-wise, gut health-wise, skin-wise, all those things. Breastfeeding has a lot of health benefits. I'm not going to go into them in today's video because it's a long list, okay? You can just Google it. You will see the list. Then for you as a mother, breastfeeding helps you deal with so many things okay first of all you're not even washing bottles okay so it reduces your work time in half right you're not washing bottle you're not trying to sterilize bottle you're not trying to see ah, i hope this bottle is clean hope this milk is good hope this your child is not going to be having all those milk issues when you're breastfeeding your child you cut out a lot of inconveniences yes it's inconveniencing to actually breastfeed because i mean you have to be the one feeding the child like you don't get choice you cannot cut off your breast and give somebody else to do it for you okay but again for me how i saw it was I would rather give people every other work to do, like bath myself, okay? If you want to help me, bath me. I'd rather give every other person every other work to do, let me feed my child, okay? Because what people say is, oh, they want someone else to be able to feed their children so that they can do other things with themselves. Me, I'm like, do every other thing for me, okay? Wash my clothes for me, prepare food for me, arrange the house for me, clean the house for me, run errands for me, do every other thing for me so that I can just stay here, sleep, wake up, feed my child, sleep, wake up, feed my child, eat, drink water, you know, enjoy myself, watch TV. Again, if you don't have a choice, I'm sorry, like, it's an unfortunate situation, okay? I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking about people who have a choice. You have people around to help you. You have support system around you. Give them work. Why are you afraid to give them work? Give them work, you know? Give them work. Um, I've even jumped. I was talking about breastfeeding essentials. Yes, yeah, so, yes, you need that cream. Then you also need water, a water bottle, okay? If you can drink as much, you have to see, eh? Make water your friend. You're going to drink water like mad. You know, many people don't produce enough breast milk because they're not drinking enough water. Your body needs water to survive, right? Many of you are not even drinking enough water for your body to survive. So how do you now wonder your body to now produce enough milk for you to give your child? It's not possible now. Like, you cannot cheat nature, okay? So for you to be able to get enough breast milk to feed your child, you have to drink enough water, okay? Not just drink enough to sustain yourself. Drink enough water. Not just drink when you are thirsty because, like, what I, what I heard is whenever you get thirsty, you're already dehydrated. Like, it's not like, oh, I'm thirsty, so now I'm dehydrated. No, you are thirsty because you are already dehydrated, okay? So for you to... So for you not to even get to that level of being thirsty, you have to take as much water as possible. So have water bottles everywhere in your house. And again, I just remembered another advantage of actually breastfeeding is that it reduces the amount of gas in your child's tummy, okay? See, yeah, there's a huge difference. Thank God I have three different kids and I've, tr I've, tried, all, I've tried it all, okay? So I know. With Cora, Cora was always dealing with tummy issues. She was always disturbed. She was always crying. She was always cranky unnecessarily, even though she was taking breast milk. But because she was taking from a bottle, I, I always had to bop her and bop her several, I mean, what, whichever one you're doing, whether you're breastfeeding or you're bottle, bottle feeding, make sure you bop your child well, okay? But notice that with bottle feeding, you need to bop even more than normal. Like, you need to bop, wait, bop again, wait, wait, bop again for the child to get all the gas out. But with breastfeeding, because the child is getting it directly from source and there's not, there's not much space for air to enter, your child will have less tummy issues. By the way, I think I have a video about this. I'll look for that video and link it down below if I still have that video. But I think I made a video about this before. Because some things I'm saying now sound like I've said them before here. Now the next one is, can I breastfeed my daughter while pregnant? Yes, you can breastfeed your daughter, you can breastfeed your toddler, you can breastfeed your child while you are pregnant. It does nothing to the child or to the 
baby in your tummy, okay? As long as the breast milk is there, please breastfeed your child, okay? What I don't know now, because I've not done it before, what I don't know now is how best to transition. Whether you will continue breastfeeding your toddler, then breastfeed your baby joint. Whether you breastfeed toddler here, breastfeed baby here. I don't know about that part, okay? But I know that it does not have any implications on you or the baby or your toddler if you are breastfeeding while you are pregnant. Okay. Did you do anything extra for breast milk? Yes, I did, okay? With Cora, hmm. I drank oats, eh? Oats almost grew on my head. Like, anything they say helps breast milk. Again, that time, I didn't really have that much help. My husband was not around most of the time. My mom, you know, did omugo. I don't, I don't know how many months she did, but she didn't stay that long for omugo. So I was alone with the baby and I was not producing enough breast milk. I was pumping day in, day, day out. So it was so stressful. So anything they say, fenugreek uh, supplement, fenugreek seed, I took it. Milk tea, mother's milk tea or something like that. Something, mother's milk tea or milk tea or something. I forgot what the name was. There was this tea that they say helps with breast milk. I bought that tea in abundance and I was taking it every day, morning and night. It, not, it did not improve much, okay? Uh, at some point, I had hobnobs used to help. I ate hobnobs, eh? That's what made me even gain so much weight because hobnobs contains a lot of sugar as well. But I ate hobnobs, eh? Morning, afternoon, night, I was eating hobnobs, like... <laughs> Like crazy because it has oats as well. I drank oats, hobnobs, pap, all those things. They help, but let me tell you that the best thing that will help you is for you to eat well and sleep well. Just eat your normal food, eat good food, okay, healthy food, and sleep well. If you're breastfeeding or if you've breastfed before, you will notice that whenever you sleep and wake up, you'll be so engorged. And it's not because, oh, uh, you didn't feed your child in the time that you were sleeping. No. So for instance, I can breastfeed by 10 and breastfeed by 12 and breastfeed by two, right? Tentatively, not really like on the dot, or I don't start alarm and say 10 o'clock, like bam, come on, come on, breastfeeding. No, but you shall know, oh, it's been two hours, you breastfeed again, right? Now, in between those two hours, my breasts feel normal. Like they just feel their normal size, their normal, breast containing milk size, right? I've talked about breast so much in this video. But anyway, there are normal breast containing milk size, right? But if between 12 and 2, I sleep in between, let's say now I, I finish feeding my child by 12 and I fall asleep and I sleep. By the time I wake up by 2 o'clock, my breasts are huge and in fact painful sometimes, okay? Just that 2 hours sleep, mind you, I, it was two hours intervals before that time, but I was awake, okay? But when I sleep and I wake up, my breast milk, you know, becomes more. So, Sleep, nobody can tell me that sleep does not help or it's not, it's not the most important thing. It is the most important thing for you to sleep because when you are sleeping, that's when your body tries to repair itself and tries to you know, do things. Like when you are sleeping, that's when all the workers are like, okay, now she's done. Let us, let us walk well, right? <laughs> so let us produce more milk, let us produce more hormones and all of that that help with your breast milk production. So anyway, sleeping is very important for you. But as I sleep again, like I said, drink lots of water and also eat healthy and eat oats if you can eat oats, drink pap if you can drink pap. The fact that when you take those things, you tend to relax more, right? When you take pap, when you drink, especially when you drink enough pap, you will see yourself drowsy and sleepy. Same thing with oats, it's very heavy, very filling. You will see yourself drowsy and, sli and sleepy, okay? Whole grains, whole grains makes you, you know, relaxed and drowsy and sleepy. So it helps with the breast milk production. Now the next one is, I am a first time mom, exclusively breastfeeding, not the type that likes to eat. I hardly get hungry and, and due to that, okay, and due to that fact, even now that I'm exclusively breastfeeding, I don't eat as expected and this is really affecting my breast milk production. Please, which breastfeeding supplements do you suggest? I take to help in milk production. Again, like I said, there's this milk tea. If I can remember them, I'll put it, I'll put it on the screen. They say it helps. They said that um, fenugreek helps. They also said that um, brewer's yeast, if you can get brewer's yeast, that brewer's yeast helps. Uh, that's how people say that, oh, it's good to take beer or take alcohol. No, the alcohol actually helps reduce breast milk. Let me talk about this alcohol thing. People talk about, oh, if you take um, gin or if you take, not gin, if you take, I don't know which alcohol they talk about, Sha. Take alcohol, if you take um, beer or if you take palm wine, it will help your breast milk. Now, I agree, but I disagree, right? Now, I agree that it helps your breast milk because when you take those things, it tends to help you relax. Okay, again, back to that relaxation, back to that resting thing. It tends to help you relax. When you take palm wine, you, your body will be very sweet in you, okay? It helps to 
and again, as I that, it even contains water, so you're even taking more, it's more liquid intake, but it helps you relax, so it will help you produce more breast milk. However, alcohol actually dries up breast milk. Alcohol actually prevents breast milk production. So I feel like you're just in between. You're just stagnant somehow. You didn't really produce more, but you didn't really produce less because it helps you relax, but alcohol dries. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? I'm trying to say that you take a positive thing and pair it with a negative thing, so you're basically neutral. It's not like it's, it doesn't really hinder it, but it doesn't really make it, you know, come out small. Some people swear by it. Oh, yeah, people say things like, ah, after I took palm wine like this, my breast milk started rushing. But if you look at it, many of them took that palm wine when they first gave birth, okay? And normally, when you first give birth, your breast milk is usually less. It takes a few days for breast milk to kick in and become more, okay? So I think they take that palm wine at that early, early stage. Then after a few days, when the breast milk now comes, and they get in God, they're like, it's the palm wine that costs it. But if you remove that palm wine and you just like leave yourself like that, you will still get enough breast milk at that time. They're supposed to get enough breast milk. So, oh, I forgot to mention this. Please, please, and please, I am begging you. After you give breath, make sure you take all your supplements. You see those disgusting drugs they used to give at the hospital eh all those disgusting iron folic this and that that's very annoying be be complex ew disgusting you see all those dis disgusting drugs eh my sister just take them just add it to part of the suffering that you're suffering because of your child okay just add everything to oh I, to get this child i suffered yeah i did there okay but you see those supplements don't disregard them when i gave it to cora i did not take my supplements i was not serious about it and i i felt the effect with my sub with my uh, next with cora with eva and sophia my other two kids i took my supplements and i could tell there was a huge difference okay Again, like I keep saying, first time moms are usually ignorant. It's not our fault if we did not know. You've not been given birth before. You've not done this before. Even if you've done it before with maybe your sister's experience or your friend's experience, it's not the same thing. When you now start experiencing it in the flesh, it is, it is quite different, okay? All the things you know will flat off your head because... You are stressed out, okay? Anyway, so take your supplements, B-complex, folic acid, iron supplements, and vitamin c very important okay vitamin c helps you to heal faster helps to you know make your body heal faster basically and you know when you heal faster your body now has time and space to actually produce breast milk and other hormones that are necessary for your you know recovery right so you need your vitamin c you need your big complex you need your iron supplements okay because you need your blood back you lost a lot of blood while, you know, while um, um, giving birth, okay? Many of you are still bleeding, postpartum bleeding, okay? So you need your iron supplement. Just take it, sister. Close your nose and drink the thing. If you need to use coke and drink it, malt to drink it, whatever you need to use to let it go down your throat, eh? Just take it. If it's tea you need, use hot, warm tea or whatever and take those medicines. But you see those medicines? Just take them, okay? If they don't give you in the hospital, go and buy. If they don't give in your clinic, go and buy. Go and buy well woman uh, pregnant care breastfeeding, okay? Go and buy. And when you buy the pregnant care breastfeeding, make sure you also add um, vitamin C to it. Vitamin C 1000 milligram, okay? Those ones that come, some come in capsule form, some come in the... Uh, what they call it, effervescent uh, um, tabs, tablet, or whatever they call those things, okay? They come in different forms, but make sure you have vitamin C 1000 and then you have either breastfeeding, pregnant care breastfeeding, or any other supplements, anything that has all those basic things that women need. Please take it. It is very, very, very important, okay? You're going to see a difference in the way your body, you know, recovers and the way your body feels after giving birth. But food is still the best medicine for you. If you can, please try and eat, okay? Try your best to eat. Food is still the best medicine for you. Take your veggies, take your, you know, whole grains, take your healthy meals. You can see eat your junk if you want. I beg me, I don't have to restrict myself for anything I feel like it's nice to eat it, okay? Obviously. <laughs> My double chin can attest to that. Personally, or anything I want to eat, I used to go ahead and eat it though. I'm a foodie like that. Okay, but if you're not a foodie, just try your best to at least get healthy meals in. Soup. If you're not someone that likes it, at least eat soup. Lick your soup. Lick enough soup, okay? If you don't want really want there, but that's fine. Lick enough soup. Eat enough meat. The meat will also help with your iron, okay? So eat enough meat. Pepper soup. If they can make enough pepper soup for you, surely organ pepper soup. Eat pepper soup very well. Anything your body can tolerate, anything that you can that you like, eat it in excess, okay? Because you need your baby needs it, right? But when I say in excess, I don't mean you should now go and start binge eating anyhow and now grow unnecessarily fat. I'm just saying 
don't restrict your food intake at that time. That's not the time to be counting calories and be dieting. That's not the time, okay? It's, it wait, don't worry. Your child will grow up. Like me now, my child never grow finish. <laughs> so I'm just trying to tell you that your child is going to grow and not need you anymore. So you have enough time to, to diet the diet you want to diet. At that time when your child needs you, don't add the additional stress of dieting to it, okay? Now the next one is how was breastfeeding for you? No one ever talks about how difficult it is. No, I think people actually talk about how difficult it is. I think people do. I think that what you see most times online is people talking about how difficult it is. But anyway, again, breastfeeding is very difficult like I said especially as a first-time mom you won't understand what is going on like you see you see babies you see how small and cute their mouths are if a baby latches to your nipple with anger eh hey, hey a chunk of my nipple actually came out when cora was was breastfeeding because then another thing i could notice about cora was because i wasn't producing enough breast milk and they would tell you oh pu push through it and just breastfeed cora was always frustrated like you will see sweat on her forehead she's trying her to suck and me i didn't really know how to really like remove my nipple from her mouth so one day i tried that time i just tried to pull her away because i went to ease myself i tried to pull her away and next thing a chunk of my nipple came out like live a chunk of my nipple blood everywhere okay i mean the good thing about nipple is that nipple heals back to how it used to be like literally heals back like you won't, it won't heal that chunk off it will heal back normally like like nothing Came out of it at that time you'll be wondering what is happening it is so painful not only are you feeling you know local physical pain okay you're feeling pain at that at the area but not only that your uterus will also be feeling pain because when your child is breastfeeding your new it helps your uterus to shrink <laughs> In fact, let me just explain this thing to you people very well because I know that I try to glorify breastfeeding somehow, okay? Because breastfeeding is actually a very glorious thing. Don't get it twisted, okay? Breastfeeding is actually a very, very glorious, you know, fulfilling experience for mothers, right? Especially ones that want to do it. It's very fantastic, right? So that is true, but two things can be true at the same time so the other truth about it is that breastfeeding is very very painful especially when you did vaginal delivery you did vaginal delivery so you're dealing with pain down there maybe if you tore or you have stitches you're dealing with pain down there from the stitch and you are wearing pads so you can't even sit anyhow you can't lie anyhow you have to sit in place right so you're wearing pad you're dealing with stitches then you're not dealing with the nipple pain yeah you're dealing with lack of sleep and then your uterus is now doing <laughs> and that pain i don't know why i can almost envision the pain now that pain is like labor that pain is, is, is something else like that pain you can feel your tummy like contorting and twisting it is a lot of pain let's not even get it twisted it's a lot of pain okay so i sympathize with new moms by new moms i mean you know either first time moms or moms that just give birth okay i sympathize with new moms who are trying to breastfeed and are still going through all of this i sympathize with you but just know that there's a very big light at the end of the tunnel okay there is a very huge light at the end of the tunnel you suffer for a few days you know sometimes it's days sometimes it's a week or two weeks or even if it's a month that's that suffering you're going to suffer first of all it gets better it's not going to be as intense throughout like maybe the first few days it'll be very very intense but after that you get used to it okay after that the kind of pain you start feeling is when your child just latches initially that there's a pain that when your child just latches like and I want to be my child, let's be like this. This <laughs> would be so funny. I'll be doing like this. I'll be like, take now, take now. I'll be like, take, but don't take, take, but don't take. I'll be anticipating the pain. So, but once they latch very well, that's another thing you need to learn. How to make sure your child latches very well, okay? Once your child latches very well, you know, that pain subsides, right? But if they don't latch very well, if their mouth is not placed very well, that pain is going to continue. And just trust me that if you are feeling pain while you are breastfeeding your child, that child is not getting any milk, oh. That child not getting any milk, you're just deceiving yourself there. So it is better for you to remove that child's mouth and make them latch on again. No matter how hungry they are, try and remove their mouth and then try and make sure they latch properly. Make sure your nipple and your areola part enters the baby's mouth, okay? When they are smaller, it's a bit, a little bit difficult to get your areola in that's the, the, the um, part around your nipple. What am I doing like this? It's almost for me to like, <laughs> show you guys the whole thing. Anyway... When they, are, when they are small, when they are newborn, especially if you have like preemies or very small babies, their mouths are so small. So it's difficult for you to get your nipple and your 
areola really into their mouth and sometimes you see them talking only in the nipple and when they're talking only in the nipple that thing is, is the most painful thing ever okay so you have to just make sure that you remove their mouth and just try and get in as much as areola as well as you can get as you can fit into their mouth at that stage okay but just power through as your child gets bigger it gets easier you are as you get more used to breastfeeding it gets easier as you know you are now learning you know learning on the job basically it gets easier so please power through do not give up okay because there are so many benefits to breastfeeding not only for your child or your postpartum recovery but you know you bonding with your child your moods in general okay it helps to improve your mood um you will see that people that are um, that actually breastfeed their child exclusively actually report less postpartum depression so i'm going to do a video about postpartum depression right it makes things easier for you for your baby again when people say oh bottle feeding is easier i'm like how how is it easier the only part that i can actually agree that oh it is easier is that you can hand the child over to someone else to feed but again like i said why don't i give that someone else that thing i want to i want to do while my child is feeding i can give someone else to do it okay i can give someone else to do that work except having your bath and again who says you cannot have your bath when you're breastfeeding like I'm sorry, but there's really no reason anybody will give me that will make me say, okay, don't breastfeed your child. No, if you want to, please do it, okay? If you are still torn in between. Again, if you've decided that you don't want to breastfeed, it's for you. That's, that's why this video is not for you, okay? That one is for you. But if you are in between, you're not sure whether you should breastfeed or not because of things you've heard, or you want to breastfeed but you are finding it difficult, then that is why I'm making this video, okay? To encourage you that you can do it. It is the best thing for you and your child. So do it, okay? Power through it. It gets easier. The more kids you have, the easier it gets. Um, the more time you do it, the easier it gets, okay? And that thing they say about, oh, uh, your breast will become flat and this and that. First of all, what am I using the breast to do? Like, now, I, I, even if my breast is reaching my toes, can you people tell? Can you tell? So, <laughs> the husband that I married is not complaining. So, me that I'm carrying it, I'm not complaining. By the time I wear bra and lift the thing up, nobody can tell. And again, your breast will fall based on other reasons, not just breastfeeding, or not even because of breastfeeding. There's people that breastfeed and they still have pecky boobs, okay? Gaining weight and losing weight anyhow is going to make your breast fall. Uh, they're wearing the wrong bra all kinds of things genetics will make your breast fall okay so if you deprive yourself and your child of the breastfeeding experience because you are preserving breast sorry for you okay sorry for you i have nothing to say to you do you think it's wise to stop exclusive breastfeeding at three months because i'm losing weight and i am advised to stop exclusively breastfeeding my newborn for me it is not advisable to stop at three months if you can get to six months good if you can get to one year perfect okay but for me i won't advise you to stop i would advise you to eat very well okay eat very well and sleep very well except it's your doctor that is telling you that this is critical to your health you need to stop um, you know exclusively breastfeeding because it's critical to your health then i can accept but if it's just all these old wife tales or all these aunties all this uh, uh in the advice up and down then please do not stop it okay if it is food that is your problem try and eat try everything else if it doesn't now work then you cannot stop the breastfeeding because if you're not eating well, if you even if you stop breastfeeding, you're still not going to eat well. So doesn't really change anything. Just try and eat very well. Breast milk is optimum nutrition for your child. Okay, so try and optimize your own nutrition so that you can optimize your child's nutrition as well. Please, what are your thoughts on exclusively bottle feeding with but with breast milk? My thoughts are if you can give your child directly, please do. But if you don't have a choice, then bottle feeding with breast milk is the next best thing okay because there's a hierarchy to this thing let me give you guys a hierarchy in case you don't know there is breast milk directly from breasts then there is breast milk in bottle then there is formula okay mm -hmm. and in all this since i called you could not hear water right there is no need for you to give your child water so your child is six months okay i did not give my children water till they are six months and they are healthy they are beautiful they are thriving they do not die Eh? You see Sophia now that everybody's like, oh, Sophia is so cute, Sophia is so fine. Hey, um, eat Juleju. Sophia this, Sophia that. I did not give Sophia water for three months, for six months. Oh. Again, remember I said that breast milk contains 75% water. Okay, so God has made it easy for you. He mixed both the water and the milk and put it together for your child. I've got some people argue things like, you, you, that you are like this now. After eating, you need to drink water. Why don't you want to give your child water? And I'm like, did you see me drinking milk? Did you see me drinking breast milk as food? <laughs> so why are you comparing me that I ate aku? <laughs> why are you comparing me that I ate beans? That I ate eba? 
You're comparing me that I ate a bar with someone that is drinking basically water throughout the day. Like, it's not the same thing, okay? That feeling of thirst that you have is because you are a grown person and your taste buds have changed and you are now eating solid food that now make you thirsty, okay? But if you are basically living on liquids, you will not be thirsty. That's just the truth, okay? So, there's no argument you want to argue. Like, when I say I'm a pro at this thing, I'm a pro at it. There's no argument you want to give me that will make me understand why you have to give your child water to drink. There is no reason. If you are exclusively breastfeeding or exclusively... Even to exclusively formula feeding because formula again if you check the composition of formula they made it in such a way that water is still a lot they try to mimic breast milk as much as possible most formulas are 30 ml of water to one scoop of you know the milk powder so your child is getting enough water there is no point there is no need for you to give your child water differently in fact it can be dangerous to give your child water if you do it, if you overdo it anyway it can be dangerous because you are diluting their electrolytes you are diluting the the nutrients in their body, you are diluting their nutrition basically. What do you have to say about cracked nipples during breastfeeding? I have already answered that question and it scares the hell out of me. Is it that bad? It is bad, but you pull through it. Maybe all of us, we see for time immemorial, okay? Since the beginning of mankind, women have been breastfeeding their children and they have been passing through it and they have been coming out the other way victorious, still beautiful, still fly, still doing things, still achieving great things in their lives, okay? After passing through that. So you will be fine, my dear sister. You stop, you, people stop scaring themselves too much about, uh, your body was made to do these things, okay? God literally created you and put all the equipment for you to breastfeed and carry your child. So let, yes, it's scary. Yes, it's painful. Yes, it's annoying, but let's stop making it look as if it's something that you cannot handle. You can handle it, my dear sister. You can handle anything, okay? You're stronger than that. Give yourself some credit, please. Is the automatic breast pump better than using hands to express? Yes. I don't even know how people use hands to express. People are cultists. <laughs> Those of you that can express breast milk with your hands, you are all cultists. You people need to line up and answer questions, okay? Yeah, but seriously, I don't know how people do that hand thing. I tried it, it did not work for me. I didn't even know how to do my hand. Like, it was just, it was too messy. The breast milk was dropping on my hand. It was, it was just somehow, okay? So for me, breast pump, electric breast, breast pump, ex especially, is very good. But if you can get the manual ones, perfect. With most of my kids, I use manual ones. I don't, I don't think I ever had electric breast pump. Did I have? I never had electric breast pump. I think my sister now gave me hers at some point, but I gave it back to her. I didn't even really use it like that, okay? So um, the manual ones actually work really well if you cannot afford the electric ones. But if you can afford the electric ones, the double electric is really good. All these Madela double electric and the other ones are really good if you can do that. It's double, the ones that you put at once and suction, you know, the milk out. Those ones are really, really good. Um, but yeah, if you can hand the express, I don't know. Again, I don't know how that thing works for people. It never works for me for one day. Someone is asking, how do I make breastfeeding easier and painless for the first few days? So the first is that while you are pregnant, towards the end of your pregnancy, try and just clean your nipples, you know, a bit. It, it doesn't really help much, to be honest. For me, I don't really think that thing really... It's what they advise, but I don't really think it really helps me much, okay? Because the pain is still the pain. <laughs> the pain still was still there, right? For my, for my three kids, the pain was still the pain. Although for Sophia... Sophia came out like a champion. Oh. Sophia latched very well from day one. I didn't need to try much for her. I was like, this child, you, have you done this before? Have you been here before? <laughs> because she latched really well, so I didn't really have problems with breastfeeding Sophia. But with Ava, actually with Cora, that pain was something else, okay? So I don't really think I saw a difference, even though I tried to clean my nipples before then. They said use a towel, wet towel, and just clean it multiple times. I don't really think I saw a difference. Your child is still going to clean all those things out. You see your nipple, you see your areola that becomes black during pregnancy. Your child is going to use mouth and clean all those nonsense. Like, it's disgusting to think about. Uh, but in general, how to make it easier is try and sleep as much as possible. Try and start pumping. The moment you give birth, try and, try and start pumping, okay? Because I noticed that many times, because when we first give birth, we don't really know how to latch very well. We don't know how to, you know, breastfeed our child very well. Our babies are not actually activating the breast milk uh, production. They're, they're actually not doing it because they're not even latch properly, okay? You guys know that it is being activated by, you know, a child's mouth, as in, well, I mean, whether you a child sucks or not, a, you, a woman that gives birth is going to produce breast milk, right? But I'm saying that a child's mouth actually helps to, you know, activate it faster and makes it come out even more and to even increase, you know, the quantity. That's why they tell you the more you breastfeed, the more you breastfeed. So if you want to stop breastfeeding, breastfeeding is going to be very difficult if you are still breastfeeding and you want to stop it because the more the child latches and sucks, the more your body 
produces more milk, okay? Anyway, so, but at that beginning stage, if you're not really comfortable with your child latching, it's very painful, it's very annoying, it's very terrible for you, then you can try pumping in between. You still have to try it because it's still better for your child to, you know, master it in the beginning stage instead of later on. So you're still going to try, but in between, if you are free enough, if you are rested enough, in between you can try pumping. It will help bring out the milk more and it will help, you know, just make it easier for your child to get milk. When they don't get milk is when they are very frustrated and they talk with energy. But when they're getting milk, they're more relaxed. So you can help speed up the process by pumping in between breastfeeding. I remember doing that with Ava and I did that with um, Sophia as well. Then also make sure you have your nipple cream on hand. Always, you know, if you don't have nipple cream on hand, make sure you take that your hind milk and rub all over your nipples and your areola. Not just your nipple, your nipple, your areola, every, everywhere around it, okay? Um, what else again? Try and find comfortable positions, get a breastfeeding pillow. If you can lie down, if you can lie down while breastfeeding, then do it. But for most new moms, it's not advisable because it's, you are still new to it. So you can you know, lie on your child or something, okay? So do it in a comfortable sitting position. Make sure you have help. Have someone to gist with. Have someone that's keeping you company. Just have, if you can, just try and get help. Having moral support, someone telling you can do it, somebody encouraging you to do it, it helps. Having somebody that's just there, even the person not encouraging you, the person is just there gisting with you, laughing with you, making you happy, it actually helps. So if you can get it, then please do. But with time, if you can learn how to breastfeed your child while lying down, it actually helps a lot because your child will just wake up, latch, breastfeed, remove mouth. Like, especially when they are older, when they are like, maybe like, four months, five months, six months, they can roll over and stuff like that. You just, you don't need to wake up fully to breastfeed your child in the night. You just, just leave the thing for them. Especially if your breast has already slacked. What's the point? <laughs> if your breast has already fallen, you can just stretch it to where the child is. When the child is finished sucking, you carry your thing, roll it back and put it back where it's supposed to be. But anyway, breastfeeding in line position is very, very comfortable. It's very comfortable for you, comfortable for your baby. But please, in the beginning stages, if you're not if you're not used to it, if you're, especially if you're a first time mom, you're not used to it, then please, that beginning stage is just avoid it, okay? Um, look for a comfortable sitting position. Uh, if you want to try the lying position, make sure you are awake, you're not tired, you're not sleepy, you're not the type that is dozing, I know. If you're if you are awake and you're alive, maybe you just woke up from sleep, eh, hey, you can try it. But also remember to raise your baby up and bop your baby, especially at that beginning part where they're not really moving, they can't really move their tummies and all of that. Raise your child up and bop your baby, and then, you know, put your baby back down to sleep. Then also try and breastfeed your child every two hours, one and a half hours. At that beginning stage especially, try and breastfeed your child as often as possible. Just try as often as possible. Just <laughs> when I when I when I had uh, newborn babies, right? If you stay in my house, you you can draw my breast. Like you can see the shape of my like you can tell how you can describe my breast very well because I don't get shame. I once my child is hungry, I just bring it out. Bam! It's left for you to close your eyes. Even inside cow, anywhere I go. If my child is hungry, I'm going to bring it out and feed my child. Okay? It helps for it helps to maintain your supply because it's telling your body that oh this baby is actually you know consuming all this milk. So try, try and produce more for this baby. Okay? That is why pumping is also good. You know, in between, if you want to increase your breast milk supply, try and pump as much as possible in between. It helps to tell your body that, you know, you have enough, you have a big mouth to feed, okay? So, chop chop, do the job that you're, that you're meant to do, okay? So, you have a big mouth to feed, so try and produce more, right? Another thing you need to get into your head as a mom is that your body can produce enough milk for your child, okay? I'm not saying your body will produce it. I'm saying your body can produce enough milk for your child. Have you not seen women that breastfeed their children and stock up freezer? They fill a whole freezer, they fill a whole fridge with breast milk. Have you not seen such women? How did they do it? I'm, I'm not talking about the ones that have... There are some people that they say they have one hormonal issues that make them produce excess breast milk. I'm talking about normal, regular women. They do it. They produce enough breast milk for 10 babies. Meanwhile, it's only one child they have, okay? So I'm just trying to tell you that it is also... You can train your body to do it, okay? You can. If you are interested in it, you can train your body to do it. You can train your body to do it by drinking more water and pumping as much as possible. Another thing I used to do then is, before my child eats, I try and pump out that form milk, you know, that form milk, again, like I said, is composed mainly of water, right? So I try and pump out a little of it so that my child will get more of the 
thick stuff, right? Because if you just give your child just that water, sometimes if your child sucks air, hey, another thing again is I make sure I empty one breast before I move to the next breast. Like the child will suck this breast until I can tell that there's nothing coming out again before I now move to the next breast, okay? So to also help that process, I just try and reduce that full milk. Because if you, if you give the child that full milk, they might drink all the full milk and then they are full and then they sleep off and then they come back and drink all the full milk and then they are full and then they sleep off. They don't get to that thick, you know, hind milk, right? So I try to just pump out, especially when my child has slept for a while, I try to pump out the full milk, then I give them that hind milk very well, then I now move to the next breast and they can now drink the full milk from there, from there so they can get enough, you know, water. What I do is, again, pump out a little bit of the full milk, breastfeed my child the hind milk, then continue from here. Most of them don't even finish this one because they're already full from that hind milk, which is very thick, okay? Yeah, and that's it, okay, you guys. Your body can produce enough milk. Even women who have twins, who have triplets, and they want to breastfeed their twins or their triplets, a lot of women are doing it. A lot of women can do it. Sometimes it is a mindset thing. Many people don't like to hear this, but sometimes it's all about your mindset. If you decide that you cannot do it, you will not be able to do it. If you decide that you don't want to do it, because being able and wanting is, are two different things, okay? Some people can do it, but they don't want to do it. That's fine. Again, it's your choice. But I'm saying that if you want to do it, then change your mindset towards these things, okay? See it as a joyful experience. You are nurturing your child. Why am I closing my eyes? <laughs> It looks like I'm ready for another baby. Anyway, I'm not a beggar. I'm not to be cocoa. But I'm just saying that if you can just envision it as a glorious moment, you are feeding your child, you are nurturing your child from your body, you are bonding with your child, you are comforting your child. It's a lot of, a lot of psychological and emotional benefits for you and your child, okay? You are comforting your child. Those, that eye contact with your baby while the baby is breastfeeding, that's body, you know, uh, skin to skin or, you know, your child being in your bosom, basically. All those things are very comforting to your child. They are very comforting to you as a mom. They are helping your child relax. They are helping you relax. They are helping both of you bond. Why won't you be fine? Why won't you be okay? <laughs> Anyway, breastfeeding is a beautiful thing. It's all I came to tell you guys today. Um, I hope you guys learned a thing or two. If you are against everything I said in this video, again, like I said, keep your opinion to yourself. If I see your comments in the comment section, I'm going to delete it, okay? That's if I see it too. If I don't see it, I might leave it. Or if, if, I don't, if I don't feel like I might leave it. But if I see a comment that is here to discourage mothers or here to come and talk, to come and counter a point I did not make. Some people will soon come here and say, why are you telling women that they should, they should breastfeed their children even when they are dying? I, I, nobody said that here, okay? <laughs> we are here to encourage, we are here to uplift, we are here to make people happy, we are here to make babies happy, okay? We are here to give advice that will help mothers, help babies, okay? To get the best out of the experience. That's what we are here for, okay? And I'm really, and I'm really glad about it, okay? <laughs> anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in my next video. If you have more questions about this, maybe I'll answer them in the comment section, please. Just leave them there and I'll answer them there, okay? Bye.